Hi and welcome to Greg James Fishing World. You're about to watch a new video we've put together called What to Look For When Buying Your Next Boat. Enjoy the vid, it's a ripper and tight lines. When you're buying a new boat, think about purpose and activity. Are you going to be fishing, wakeboarding, cruising, skiing or sailing? When you're looking at that boat, it's one of the simplest things a fella or a lady will ever do. Look below the gunnel because that's what gets you into trouble or gets you home. So think about your activity and think about multi-purpose because a lot of people say, yeah, well, I'm going to take the mates fishing, but then I've got a couple of kids and then I've got this and I've got that and I might take the darling out once and every now and then and she'll come with me and she can work the anchor and she can do this and she can do that. Think about the comfort and the activity because if you're a fisherman or fisherwoman and you're going to be spending 80% of your time trying to catch whiting, don't buy a boat that isn't a useful work boat that can take you to where the whiting are because the whiting are not in every part of the Gulf's waters. If it's going to go wrong, and ain't going to go wrong on the top bit, if that boat's not going to be safe, it's because of what's on the bottom half. Don't care what anybody else tells you. You look at all the different types of hulls, planing hulls, surfing hulls, work hulls, the bow, all of that works, and the stern, but it's that bottom bit. And if you look at that little beautiful five metre north bank, where the rollers are on the trailer, have a look under there, have a look at that working room. When you're up there with a big cigar and a small coke and sailing, coming back with a boatload full of fish, those things are working for you. Those little ridges there are getting the water out from under your boat. When you're up there, you know, mucking around, doing what you're doing, being a happy little jappy, that thing's working. Where are you going to be using your boat? Think about it. Most people think, oh, I'll go out once a month. But will they be going up the river? going in the Coorong, going in our golf waters, and think about the sort of activities, the type of fishing you'll be doing there. This is critical. I'm no longer 35, and I'm no longer bulletproof. Now I've got more bloody holes in me than I care to think about. Launching a boat is easy, pretty much, pretty much. But if you're launching it off a beach, which I've done for 20 years, it's not. If you're launching off the good places like St Kilda and North Haven and West Beach and those places, in the water, tie it up, come back in, jump in the boat, start it up. It's easy, I've done that. Matt Abraham and I went out there a year or so ago and it was like catching fish. But if you're launching off a beach, that is a different thing. When you're coming back, you're tired, hopefully you've got a boat full of fish, you might have an injury on board and you've got to get that boat up on the trailer. Think about it, work your mind through it. Where will you be doing 90% of your launching and retrieving? Will I be on my own? Think about things like safety gear, the room on your boat, your storage, and your equipment. And why do you need to think about that? Because when something goes wrong, and I've been in a boat a couple of times and I've gone wrong, the ocean is a, is a lonely place to be. It is lonely. As well. You need to have that gear on board, stowed away, so it doesn't rock around. You've got to have your batteries fixed and put away if you've got an electric start. You might have fuel tank that's above floor. All those things come into it. Think about your power unit. Are you going to have an outboard, inboard? I'll fish with both. Is it sail? And what's your application going to be? How are you going to use that boat? Boat and outboard combos. Most, very quickly, most days these days, you go and buy a package. You buy both. I never have. I don't get myself talked into it. I'm not having a crack at the boat dealers because they're all over here. But I'm saying, have a think about that engine. I mean, most motors are... Most engines are fantastic engines, very powerful, fuel injected, that's a two-stroke. There's a lot of uh, very complicated technology goes into them now. Find out as much as you can about them. Think about insurance. Are you going to be with the RAA, Club Marine perhaps, or Nautilus? They're the three main ones. And if your boat goes belly up, and there's been a couple up while we the last uh, few months, and there's that terrible tragedy at Venus Bay, you want that insurance company to look after you so you can get back on the water as fast as you can. Finally, think about your technology. Have a look at your GPS, have a look at your sounders, and make sure they show you how to use them. In my view, what's the most important GPS mark you can put in your finder? Home. If you're launching from the boat ramp, I've been caught in pea suit. I didn't know where I was. Didn't know. There's no wind. Just sitting there for two and a half hours, I think it was. Could not find my way home. One of the benefits of buying new boats, new motors, is that they come with an outside tilt for washing and cleaning and uh, doing a bit of uh, maintenance on your engine. The really important thing about maintenance is that uh, these are highly sophisticated, very well made engines. Mercury is no exception. 
and you need to drown these engines in, in uh, water dispersant, CRC, whatever, RP7, whatever you want to call it, because while they sit in your shed and they've been out in the sea, they are subject to the elements. If you're ever buying a second-hand boat, take the canopy off it, and if you have a look at the electrics, you might see little white specks of like fluff almost, dust on the wiring and on the engine. That's usually dry salt. And what that means, that engine's probably been drowned. In other words, the boat's tipped or he's backed it off the trailer with the plugs in, uh, not inserted, and she's sunk on him. He probably pulled it out all right, but it means it's had water on the engine, and that's not a good thing. You don't spend thirty or $40,000 and just leave it in the shed to look after itself. It's really important you treat them like babies because you want them to grow up and be strong, and when they do that, they'll bring you home on a crappy day when the weather's left you out there and the sea's a lonely place to be, I can tell you. And this is the traditional boat winch. Um, depending on your age, I'll be really frank, this winch may not be for you. It's very effective, it's uh, based on the principles of a small uh, axis on a big wheel and it's got a, a non-elastic belt for safety, a strap if you like, rather than a wire and the danger of all of those things from years gone by. But that's a, uh, a cloth uh, strap that's very effective. The thing about these winches is that um, if you're uh, a little bit old, older, as, as I am, I'm in my late 50s, you might find this a fairly heavy boat to pull in in rough conditions, so this is a fairly slow process. With this sort of winch, you would need to have someone holding the back end of your boat, the stern of your boat, to keep it on the trailer properly, so it can be a little sort of rushed, you know, you're there on your own perhaps, if you haven't got a mate, you're there clambering over the trailer while it's on the boat ramp, hooking up this, uh, this clip onto the eyelet, under the bow eyelet, and then running back to this thing here and then winching it. And you can imagine that's, you know, got a few things, and if you slip over, there's, uh, there's a few things that uh, you need to look for. So it might be that if you're an older bloke or you've got that sort of, you still like to go out on your own, have an electric winch, change that over to an electric winch and uh, something that you just a press button control and you can actually operate it from when you uh, hook the actual, uh, the actual uh, winch uh, strap onto the boat itself. A real tip when you're using these things, regardless of whether you've got an electric winch or not, is that when you've launched your boat and you're on your back going your way out and you've got it tied up at the ramp on the, on the uh, pontoon there or whatever, when you take, take this back, take your car back to the um, boat ramp car park, run this all the way out to the back of the trailer and so that when you back it down again, it's already there for you. So you're waiting on the, you've got your boat on the ramp, coming back in, you're not holding up other people who are on the uh, boat ramp wanting to use it, so it's all ready to go when you come back in. So there's a range of different things here. This is, this is not bad. If your hands are wet, your hand will slip on that. That's too, I haven't got big hands, but that's too, that's too thin and too finicky. I'd get a, a slip over handle on that, something you can really hang on to. And the other thing that's missing, it's a great boat, it's got some chain here to tie the bow down, which is really good. It's got a U-bolt there, a D-bolt as we call it. That will hold that down in the case that, particularly when you're travelling at speed, towing behind your car, you need a third thing to hold it. And most people don't do this, but what you should do is get yourself a little piece of rope, tie it around this, gunnel, uh, this uh, ballard here, tie it around here, just a couple of half inches, down through the bow rail, onto the spinner, and tie that to your trailer bar. Just a couple of half inches or more, feed it back through itself, there's plenty of knots that'll work. It's just the third thing that if you have an accident and the boat comes off, that will hold it when the force and abrasion will snap these, believe it or not. Well, that's it. You've just watched my very first vid on what to look for when buying a new boat. Enjoy the view in the background. It's the beautiful Gulf St. Vincent looking west. Tight lines. And thanks for your company. See you next time.